Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. One, two, watch. Ross, great time, by the way, but introduce the guest, man. Today, we have at a Cooper's MMA, Maxime Zamurican. Jeez, man, you're hard to name. Your name is hard to say, and you did make my life easy. How are you getting on, bud? You well? Oh, all well, all well, all well. Maxime, it's obviously a big week for yourself, but uh, on this one, on the Energize one to watch, we want to find out a tiny bit more about the fighter. So before we get into the fight, tell us exactly like how how like how you uh, ended up in in Cooper's MMA. Uh, so originally, when it, before, before I started training, I used to do a lot of sports, playing gardens, foot, soccer, and stuff like that. And then just wanted to switch it up a little bit. And then I was looking up actually for a freestyle wrestling gym, and there wasn't a lot around here in Avon. So and then I found. I went on to Google, I found Cooper's MMA, and that was about seven years or so ago. And I just decided to join, I think it was seven or eight years ago, and I haven't stopped training since. Started off, yeah, started off with just doing the MMA program in Cooper's, and then I moved on to the kickboxing and then the jiu-jitsu. Nice. And uh, this will be your pro debut on Saturday, is that correct? Yeah, that's my first pro fight, yeah. And how are you feeling about making the move into the pro ranks? Oh, uh, look, I, I feel ready. I, I thought I'm, I thought I was ready a couple of fights ago to be honest because I've I've been training doing like pro level training with my team constantly so it's not I don't think obviously the rent the the rounds are a bit longer in the pros than compared to the amateurs but I'm re- well prepared for that and can't wait to smash it now this weekend. Yeah, we've been following you for ages and then waiting to get you on and then the fights have been falling off and then like it's, yeah. it's great to see that you're finally on this card as well this weekend in Battle Arena. Yeah, yeah, because I know that this show was meant to happen two weeks before and then it kind of got moved. And yeah. Actually, like, yeah. yeah, it was going to change it in the diary what date you're on. And all, oh, yeah, madness. and then I had a different, I had an opponent switch because my original opponent got a staph infection actually in his calf. Look, it is pretty bad. I did see the pictures of it. So I got his opponent switched there. Uh, I was a good few weeks ago, maybe seven, seven weeks ago. And tell us this, does the day change? How much does that affect your weight cut and how much does it affect your preparation for the fight? Uh, I, look, I was already, because the way I do my training is done in blocks. So I just had to tweak a few things. The weight cut, I, my weight was still pretty high, so it didn't really affect me that much. Uh, and that's about it. Like, I did change a few things, obviously. I didn't, I obviously started dieting a few weeks after again and stuff like that. But I was ready in camp because I was meant to fight on Clan Wars, the one that was meant to happen on, in March. But that got postponed and it didn't give us a day that it was going to happen. And so I said, look, I can't fight on that card because you he's, he's aren't giving me a date when I'm going to be fighting. And I already got matched for Ballerina, so I had to pull it that. So I was already in camp for that fight for, like, I'd say, just the end, end of December, start of January. So I've been in camp for this fight for about six months. Jeez, Maxine, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that's some hard work. I, I, I hope you do reap the rewards that you deserve. I um, sure will, I sure yeah, will. but what's it was? Can, can I just ask what's the difference in having like a six month camp before your debut, and then like shout out to Le- uh, uh, Leon who fights in Team KF. He jumped on in like a day's notice in Cage Warriors to make his debut. Like, what's the what, like? That's obviously one day and six months. But what's the what's the it, like? How's the preparation been? Just solely focused on this one goal. Yeah, it's just I think because it's like it's really important to taper off as well. So once the the because obviously I was going, I think the clan wars carried got cancelled about a week before I was meant to fight, so I was kind of tapering down already for the last week. And then it got cancelled, obviously, and then I kind of took about two or three weeks just light training and then I picked it back up, you know. Because I, if I kept training constantly for like since uh, say January, say March, the fight got the clan wars got cancelled, and then if I kept training hard, I could have got injured or something like that. So I kind of had to taper off a little bit, which gave me some time for my body to recover a little bit. And then I picked up the intensity again for the next eight weeks. Um, Maxime, how many pros do you have in Coopers at the moment? Uh, just just me at the moment. Just me at the moment. And would you be the first pro fighter to come out of that gym? Uh, we had a guy before, but he doesn't train here anymore. So so, uh, so I, you're, you're so leading the, the moment, charge for yeah, Coopers? Yeah, yeah, at the moment, yes, yeah. That's a big oh. honor, actually, if you think about it. Yeah, definitely. Do you, are you proud that you're the only pro on the team now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me, to be honest. Like, everyone is at very high level here. So, 
like so many guys can turn pro already. Like we have such a really good Jitsu team as well. So good high level belts here as well. So and Maxine, tell us this. If someone's never seen you fight before, who would you compare your style to? Uh, I couldn't honestly I couldn't even tell you to be honest. Look, I well, I come into different fights differently. I don't always fight the same. You know what I mean? I kind of like the way the, the approach that actually GSP took when he was kind of in his prime. He says that he used to come into a different fights differently so no one can really study him and get ready for him. So that's the way I look at it. So one fight I can grapple and one fight I can just strike. You know what I mean? I'm pretty comfortable in both. So and I think my grappling is as good as my striking. So Ross, he's playing at your heartstrings there. I mentioned GSP. Yeah, it is my favorite fighter. And you know what? It's such a unique way to be. Um, obviously, as you're moving into your pro career, you know what I mean? One thing you will have going forward is you'll have more chance to study your opponents and more time to look at tape. Is that something that you've looked at on this opponent? You know what? Because this is my second opponent, I only looked at like two of this or two fights of this fella and they're pretty much the same, but they're like same thing. They were like, what I think a year or two ago, so I presume he's obviously gotten better, you know. So you can't really study was for someone that's fought two years ago. And you reckon he might have a bit of ring rust coming in here now? Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm looking for that quick finish, you know. <laughs> you say he's in the comments now, being like, Not a chance, lads. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when you say you're coming in looking for a quick finish, do you hope this on the feed or, or on the ground or wherever the fight Where, goes? Wherever. Like for me, I, I, I do believe I'd go and finish this guy as well. But I'm looking for a dominant performance. Just looking to dominate. I want to be known as a fighter that dominates anyone that he fights. So, And Maxim, obviously this is one to watch. And we want to know, what makes you different to all the other bantamweights in Ireland and across the world? I think I can mix it up very well. I think, as I said before, my striking is as good as my grappling. I've dec- a good enough wrestling as well. So if I have to do, if I say, if I'm thinking I'm going into a fight, thing it's going to be a stand-up fight, I know that I can mix it up and finish the fight on the ground or if vice versa, I can finish the... I, I think I'm pretty big enough. I'm big enough bantamweight now as well as I'm, at the moment. I'm fi- still feeling out kind of because I'm still young. But I think I have a lot of power over a lot of guys, especially in amateurs when I was fighting. Like the amount of lads that told me that I hit more, harder than they think. You know, I fought some strikers in MMA, and once they start touching them up a little bit, they start to shoot as well. So, so you feel feel like you've got you've got all the all the tools in your arsenal, and yeah. uh, also you also have obviously a unique look with like the neck tattoos and stuff like that. Which yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, going in favor. <laughs> the only thing that's hard about you is to pronounce uh, that surname of yours. But other than that, like man, that's it. You're yeah, a superstar. Yeah, well, like, I mean, that's why people like Cher and Bono go by one word name. So it's just like Maxim and that's it, full stop. Uh, Ma- Maxim, like, you're obviously falling over to Birmingham now. Uh, I think you said yeah. Thursday. Uh, can you tell yeah, us who you're, fly- yeah, who you're flying over with and, um, and what, just, what are you sort of expecting? We're just going over with my coach, Keith, Keith Cooper. But I was meant to go with another lad. He's kind of does my pad work and stuff like that just now and then and he can't go because of work because he'll have to quarantine when he comes back and stuff and stuff like that so he couldn't go so it's just going to be me and my coach flying over so we're going over on Thursday just going to do the bats and for the water loading over there in the hotel then weigh in and just chill out rehydrate and stuff and is the way cut nasty for 135 for you or not a bother you've done it before I've done it before, you know, it's, look, no way cut is easy. And if anyone says that it's an easy way cut, you know, they're going to be lying to you. No way cut, especially when you have to do bats and stuff like that, because you have literally lying and dying in the bat, you know, you're straining all the water out of yourself. So it's not easy, but it, it could be, look, it's, it's as hard as you make it. It just depends on your diet. If you have, if I have my diet really clean, I won't struggle at all. As a clean? Just, uh, <laughs> it's a clean, oh, it's okay, been, it's a- yeah. That for sure it has been, yeah. For the That's past not a pizza eight. box in the background, is it? No, 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 no. I wish it was. <laughs> in, 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 in fairness, the one thing that doesn't lie ever is the scales. You can't cheat the scales yeah. unless you're DC with a tail, but that's a different story altogether. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. At the end look, of the day, you'll end up killing yourself that bit more to, to make the weight. But uh, oh, look, oh, I'm wishing you all the best, uh, Maxine. Um, do you have a prediction for us for this Saturday? No, I don't like making predictions, but I do have a feeling that I will finish this guy in about round two. 
Okay. Well, look, as as a, as a, but as I said, I'm just going to go in there. I'm not focusing on the finish. I'm focusing on dominating them from the start to finish. So if it goes the distance, I just want to put on a dominant performance and just being known. So people saying, oh, you're fighting that fella. He's a super dominant fighter. You know what I mean? That's what I've been known. I want to be known as just being able to dominate people. The likes of GSP, Kamara Usman, stuff like that. Khabib, and, you know, people like that. And Maxim, where can people watch your fight? Yeah. So the fight is going to be live on uh, Sky TV. I do believe it's channel 437. So that'll be live on Sky. And then if you go to my Instagram, at Maxime Zamorakin, and I have a pay-per-view link in the in the bio thing. So if you go on that and you can buy the pay-per-view, I'm not sure how much it is. I think it's only like eight or 10 or, or something like that. So it's not too expensive. You spend that with the lads on the weekend, you know? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> if, 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 you, if you send us the rest. <laughs> if we, yeah, if we, exactly, yeah. yeah. If we if you send us that link, we'll put it in the bio. Of yeah, it'll be down in the bio well. by now. So yeah. make sure yeah, you check okay. it out to watch Maxim compete this Saturday in Pal Arena. Uh, Maxim, we'll give you the final word. Any any shout outs or anyone you want to give a shout out to before you let you go? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out obviously to my team and then a couple of my sponsors, Chop Chop Barbershop. I have geez, I have so many. Uh I'll send you the picture <laughs> of some of the sponsors. You can put it in. Yeah. I can't remember them all at the moment. Don't worry, we'll give them all a tag. Yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah, give them yeah, all a yeah, tag. Yeah. Well, Maxim, thanks a million for jumping on. Make sure to hit the link in the bio to support Irish MMA and watch Maxim compete on Ball Arena in Birmingham this Saturday. Ross, anything else to say before we wrap things up? No, guys, if you haven't watched this video, do make sure to like, share, subscribe, and as always, stay, stay energized. Energize, shall up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you're doing... Some interviews with Dylan Moran and that I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.